Here we are. There it is. Oh, that's beautiful batting. Got another one. The pressure mounts. Simple catch. Outstanding. It's the start of the West Indies international season and we're on the wonderful tourist destination, the island of Barbados. Lots of sand, lots of sun, and lots of sea. But it's also an island that has produced some fantastic international players and the West Indies hoping to build on the promising end to 2019 against an Ireland team hoping to make their own history here on tour of the Caribbean. It is the beginning of this uh, three-match ODI series in the Colonial Medical Insurance One Day International Series. We open up with uh, three One Day Internationals, two here in Barbados, then we move to Grenada for the final one and the beginning of the T20 series and then concluding in St. Kitts with those two T20 internationals. Bright sunshine, nice cooling breeze across this historical venue. We'll go to the middle now with the captains and Darren Ganga. Touch time for the first uh, one day in this three-match ODI series of the Colonial Medical Insurance Series. I've got the two captains with me, Karen Paul Pollard, uh, captain of the West Indies. I've got uh, Andy Balberni, who is a captain of Ireland, and Jeff Crow, the match referee, will witness the toss. Pollard has the coin. Tails, Tails is the call. What's it? Tails, Ireland. Tails, Ireland win the toss. Andy, what are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to bat first. And why is that? Yeah, it looks pretty good surface. Uh, historically, we've seen some results. Uh, batting first is always quite good. And yeah, if we can get first use, then great. Your record against the West Indies is not so great. You've had one solitary win against them. What are you going to try differently to get different results? Um, I think we've just got to put in a strong performance. We've got a couple of new guys who've coming into the ODI setup for the first time and we just want them to express themselves and, and do their best. And if we put in a performance against this strong West Indies, that's all I can ask as a captain. Great conditions in which to do it as well. What a wonderful backdrop with the cruise ship there on the port. But it's uh, no holiday time for us here because Niall O'Brien, the former Ireland player, is with me. Ireland, Niall, your thoughts on the Ireland team? Thanks very much, Chris. Wonderful to be here. Well, Paul Sterling, stellar batsman, had a fantastic 2019. He'll be one to watch. Gareth Delaney, leg spinning all around. Her. Hits the ball very, very cleanly. Lorca Tucker's going to keep wicket. He's been preferred over Gary Wilson, which is a fairly big call in Andrew Balberni's first game as captain. The West Indies team led, of course, by Kyron Pollard. And, of course, they've got Hayden Walsh Jr. back in today. No place for left-arm spinner. Harry Peer, Shea Hope and uh, Hepmeyer Lewis. A lot of eyes will be on them, along with Puran and Brandon King. And, of course, the local boy, Rustin Chase, and the seam bowling options with Joseph Cottrell and Paul. The umpires for today, Joel Wilson of Trinidad and uh, Ruchira Paliogurage alongside him. And they'll be hoping for just as good a game as well. And they'll be getting some assistance. We'll inform you with the no balls today because there will be that auto no ball experience for us where the th television umpire will be looking and calling and re passing on information to the on-field umpires as to whether there is a no ball. So I think now a lot of people around the world have been talking about that and we're having it here again. <laughs> Well, this man's had a fantastic 12 to 24 months. Sheldon Cottrell, a real character, very skillful. Probably dropped his speeds down a little bit over the last year or so, but he's added some real nous. He's got some wonderful skills. He's going to operate from the Joel Garner end. He'll be looking for some swing with that wind coming across from the east. Cottrell will be looking to swing the ball back into Paul Sterling. Short fine leg and uh, a deep backward square. Ireland are away. 
friendly half volley with Cottrell looking to find any swing that might be there early. Nice again. A very strong area. Wow. That has flown. Now, did that disturb the surface or did that just hit one of those slightly grassed areas? It's very slight grass, but patchy on the surface. Four, fortuitous. It went down and to the right of She Hope and left of Slip. A little bit of shape away. Gareth Delaney, tentative. His heart would have been in his mouth here for a fraction. Slip is too wide. First slip is at one and a half, even two. She Hope might have had a bit of an attempt. That should be a boundary. Slightly shorter side of the ground and with the wind as well. Nice pull shot. This field by Nicholas Buran, Trevor Penny will be having a, a look at that. The assistant coach for the West Indies, 22 without loss. Another boundary. Short and wide, won't please Cottrell. He sets high standards for himself, with accepted by Sterling. That's pulled away for four, no problems with the front foot from Joseph. It was way back in the crease, but capitalized on by Sterling. to what you're talking about there and Sammy short delivery punch straight Karen Pollard the captain of the West Indies uh, the West Indies they take their first wicket in this encounter so far Joseph in his second delivery a little bit of extra pace hitting high on the bat and you could see the Pollard is calling them in for this discussion you could see the, the Irish always have the supporters coming over watch the cricket beautiful nicely caressed through that cover region spoke about his class well he's showing it the captain of this Irish team and that will build his confidence pull the way and we'll get four very controlled, we've seen from Balberni. His second boundary of the over so far. And again, it's, a, it's the shorter length that brings the runs. What a shot. Nice, clean and crisp. It goes over the boundary line for the first six of the innings. Brings up the 50 as well for Ireland. Talking about a good start. That's an amazing shot. Joseph banging that ball halfway down. And Delaney. Balbini was equal to the task. Oh, oh, Ruston Chase, the new bowler. First delivery gets his first wicket as well. Up goes the finger. Joel Wilson and the first wicket for Chase and the second for the West Indies in this innings. Just a faint nick. Good catch. Good glove work by Hope. Another chance for a wicket, and he's given him another short ball, this time from Alzari Joseph. And another good catch from wicketkeeper Hope. And the third wicket falls for Ireland. Gareth Delaney on the pull shot. Back of a link delivery. Under edge. Same up 
Yeah, bottom edge, almost toe of the bat. Good catch. Shea Hope diving away and coming forward, getting his two hands underneath it. It's a good catch, it's a good bit of keeping. Uh, 68 for three, the first of three matches here. And the first two being played at the Kensington Oval, the Colonial Medical Insurance ODI Series, West Indies versus Ireland. And a big shot for Ebley when he's given him. It looked out from the moment it hit the pads. The umpire agrees. And Azari Joseph strikes again, picking up his third wicket. It looked very, very good for the bowler. Had to come forward. Yeah, it's knocking middle, middle of leg out of the ground. Great persistence by Joseph. Kevin O'Brien's got to go for four. Arnold in trouble. 68 for four. Four. Azari Joseph picking up three wickets inside, six overs, uh, three for 20. He's been really the standout bowler so far. Picking up wickets with the short deliveries and against Kevin O'Brien, a bit fuller. And this one is misfielded. A uh, real loose delivery from Ruston Chase. And not supported in the field on that occasion. Picks up a boundary. Uh, William Porterfield, 75 for 4 now. But very disappointed with, with that, Alzari Joseph. Well, Lorca Tucker will try a sweep, reverse sweep. He'll probably be more comfortable using his feet as opposed to Porterfield. So we might see a little bit more aggression from Tucker. At the moment, Boston Chase just enjoying his work, just wheeling away, getting through his overs nice and quickly, doing a great job for Kyron Pollard. Right. And there we go, now LeBron, as you mentioned, reverse sweep, straight to the fielder. But an excellent time to be bowling you know, for Ruston Chase, 78 for four, no pressure. Cottrell looking for a better second spell. Salute, yes, to my mates back on camp in Jamaica. He said he was looking for a better spell. And he started really well, that extra bounce on the wicket. And he was speaking about a no ball. This was a fair delivery. Sort of with fun it and as we're accustomed to see that celebration from Cottrell with, with that celebration and what it means it it gives the soldiers across the world like you said it, it feels like you as a fan you part of of the of the game another one strangled down the leg side it's a soft one there he goes again time and again his way of celebrating with others See me singles. Just speaking about Cottrell and the year he's had. You know, keeps getting wickets. And excellent decision to bring him back from Carol Pollard. Too straight again from Cottrell. This time from around the wicket, it gets too straight. It's one of the little blips in what he's done today. He's sweeping this one into the gap. He brings four. Tucker realizing the previous deliveries just been pitched outside the off stump. Decided to bring out the broom and sweep in this one beautifully. Pre mid wicket. And talking about uh, Sagarfield Silver's pavilion, the great man himself witnessing proceedings. Always present at the ground for international cricket here at Kensington Oval. And he goes big. Wonderful use of the feet. Gets to the pitch of the ball and it's a clean strike to end the over. 130 for six.
struck powerfully. And there brings up the 50 partnership between himself and Tucker. And that was a commanding stroke. He's had some success with the short delivery so far, Zari Joseph. On uh, this occasion, attempting another one. But well dealt with. Uh, very astute in his captaincy, Karen Pollard. And clearly, he wants uh, to get these batsmen out. Hence, he's turned the, his most successful bowler on the day, Alzari Joseph. Gone. And then he said, gone. Popped out at the last minute. His elbows uh, making contact with the ground. Not able to hold on the captain, Pollard, who's usually safe. Well, after all that, uh, some resistance being shown here by Ireland. Partnership of 54 between Tucker and Adair. Trying to bring some respectability to the score. Walsh Jr. comes back uh, from the Malcolm Marshall end, replacing Ruston Chase. Still wicketless so far into his sixth over. change is stump umpire signaling that uh, he will have to depart that's a good delivery nice flight good turn and a nice piece of work uh, from she hope behind the stumps and that's the fifth sort of dismissal from she hope already involved in four catches and now a stump to add to that with an excellent delivery and from here in world junior some bounce some turn enough deception to get the wicket way down the track. Gone, bounce from Alzari Joseph. A dolly for Hayden Walsh, but he's had a superb day. Young Joseph on this Kensington Oval pitch. Four wickets to him now. He gets the thumbs up from Sheldon Cottrell. It's fast, it's aggressive, extra bounce. He may have just caught the shoulder of the batter, even the glove. Simple as you like, it's brilliant bowling. It's an exhibition of fast bowling, it really is. Full, full, is it five for? Given him, it's taken a while. They're gonna review it. TV umpire to director, we've got uh, it's a decision player is pending. It looks straight. The original decision is out. And it's a fair delivery. So can we have a look at uh, front on, please? <laughs> okay. No, we don't need ultra edge. Uh, just roll that through. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go back to uh, Richer on field. Richer, there's a. Inside edge onto pad, uh, so I'm going to have to ask you to reverse your decision. Get it! The lights back on, but he couldn't get there. And a little bit disappointed, Ireland. Had a good start, another googly. Going to turn the leg side. Just nearly chipping the simplest of catches. Full toss, smashed away in the deep, should be caught, it's caught. Move well to his right, safe pair of hands in the deep. Yeah, Kimo Paul is a good mover. It's not the greatest delivery that Hayden Walsh has silved up. He was just trying to give it a little bit more ear. Too full. But when you've got defensive fieldsmen, when I call them, someone that moves as well as Kimo Paul, safely held. This one is smashed past Sheldon Cottrell. McCarthy uh, making no mistake with that one, demonstrating the power that he possesses. But how important is the start, the first game in the series? How important is that for any team in terms of getting that psychological advantage? It's very important. Both for the home team 
on the away team. You know, you want to set the tone, get that victory. You know, build that confidence going into the series. And I thought today the openers gave them a pretty solid start. But after since then, Ball. it's been all Western. Yeah, this delivery here, bounce and turn again. We've seen from uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. She hope unable to negotiate that one. And of course, buys the result. It's a prodigious turn uh, from the rough area. Hayden Walsh Jr. Boyd Rankin and McCarthy might be saying, let's just bat out the overs. Let's try to survive, get as many as we can. And this one is driven down the ground by Boyd Rankin. Powerfully to bring up another boundary. And Kimo Paul striving to get to that wicket, over pitching and being dealt with. It's been a wonderful day for cricket here at the Kensington Oval. And Sheldon Cottrell from the media centre end. This one is powerfully pulled away, backward of square, and picks up another boundary. McCarthy, 179 for nine. And frustration builds for the West Indies team. Could this be the wicket? Uh, Brandon King comfortably takes the catch, and finally, the innings come to an end. Kimo Paul amongst the wickets. McCarthy trying to go over the boundary, only reaching as far as Brandon King on the long on fence. Karen Pollard will be very pleased with this effort. This nice line and length from Kimo Paul, and not enough connection from McCarthy. Brandon King completing a simple catch and an excellent effort from West Indies. 180 all out. Ireland after winning the toss and deciding to bat first. And this is how it unfolded for Ireland. Paul still in Delaney, a good opening partnership and some good starts for most of these batsmen, but no one really able to carry on. As Ireland uh, prepare to take the field, uh, they would think that uh, it's just about 10 deliveries required for them to win this game. Yes, not a big total on the board, but still, as a team, they must have that belief that they can do it. This is the 10th time that these two teams uh, have matched up against each other. Seven wins in favor of the West Indies, one only to Ireland. Andy McBride to open. A bit of a surprise here, Ireland opting to open with the off spinner. Perhaps because of the left handed Evan Lewis uh, is at a non striker's end, but we've seen pace uh, and the bounce uh, causing Boys. problems for the Irish batsmen. Andy Balberni will be thinking that pace off the ball might do the trick to get that early wicket. Both Evan Lewis, she hope, likes the ball to come on to the bat. Oh! Gets it through. Nice stroke. And he's a powerful strike off the ball and he opens his account. And he picks up length so quickly, Evan Lewis. It's not a short delivery, there's not much width on offer. But he's so quickly onto that, and he makes accommodation very tight. That ball is on the stumps, and yet still he's managed to hit it in front of point for four. Have a look at that. Just sheer timing from Lewis, presenting the full face of the bat and a firm set of wrists. 
gets him another boundary. Immaculate timing. This is uh, Sheho at his best. Using the pace, getting the bat down in time and picking the gap. Really exquisite uh, from Shea Hoop. Really continues his good form. Just a little bit too straight on that occasion. And a flick of the wrist. Mm, good timing. And getting the result that he wanted. A little bit of disbelief there uh, from McCarthy. But he cannot afford to bowl too straight. He's strengthened the own side now. again just leaning forward caressing this one through the cover region second boundary of the over and just overcompensating on this occasion McCarthy a little more width presented and she hope was equal to the task a full face of the bat and really looks comfortable really a class player and she hope Once again, goes high in the air, should be taken, yeah. A wonderful catch. Took a bit of judging. William Porterfield, the fielder, getting Ireland its first wicket in this contest. Uh, not for the first time, a batsman being dismissed, trying the horizontal bat shot. No control from Shea Hope, hitting very high on the bat. Hence, more height than distance. And despite a slight fumble in the end, William Porterfield was able to hold on. The first wicket goes for West Indies. Hope for 13 and 27 for 1. I never lose. Would want to start off the year on a high. Just like there. Pick the length early. Although it hit the Q end of the bat, it had enough to go into the boundary. And that's the end of the over, 37 for one. I think that propensity of Lewis with that strong bottom hand grip, there we go. Open face, looks to play square often. Whether it's offside or leg side, he has latched on to that beautifully. For six. That is huge above his teammates in the Garfield Sobers Pavilion. Short of a length marker there. Why well, feels a bit undercooked here? Never tries to keep this down. Happy enough to hit it up. Carries a long, long way. Four followed by a maximum good stroke. Carried. I think that's a half chance put down by Kevin O'Brien in mid off. Yeah. Adair pitches full. Ever lose. Hanging back slightly. He loves playing the, off the back foot. Doesn't commit to the ball. Chips in the air. I think this is carried all the way. Kevin O'Brien in. Yeah, fingertip job. Not a chance you've got to take when you've got a small total to defend. It's a wonderful sound. Mark Adair not really learning the lesson at 53 for one. <laughs> 50 has come up for the West Indies, Evan Lewis, 36 from 32. That's not great pace. And again, Lewis with the pull shot. Nice strike. He's in full flow, Evan Lewis. Maybe time for Boyd Rankin to have a go as well. Ten overs gone. 62 for one.
A nice 50 for Evan Lewis, his eighth in one day internationals. Well played and the need to kick on, 75 for one. Simi Singh. Nice. Example of Lewis's front foot play against the spin and gap finding. Lovely. Little bit of his Jamaican, former Jamaican teammate in that shot from Brandon King. This is beautiful. Feet in the air. Placement is good, timing is good. First real stroke and anger we've seen. Full commitment gets full value. So to get runs coming from different players is always is always good for the team. I also feel it's about building the right attitude. Competition, in my estimation, is uh, very healthy within a team. And we've seen that with the work ethic uh, shown by Nicholas Puran. She hope in particular, he's been exceptional. That has a positive effect on the likes of Shimran Hetmaya, who of late has become a little more determined in his approach. For Tutor's boundary here for Brandon King. Just off the bottom edge, he was searching for that pull shot. But uh, he will get four runs. Yes! Chipped it to short fine leg. Yeah, he will be disappointed, Brandon King. It's another opportunity going up begging at the ODI level for this young right-hander from Jamaica. You would say it's a soft dismissal. Simi Singh just uh, enticing that uh, sweep shot. He found the fielder. He's possibly getting uh, the top edge of the bat. The exciting Shimran Hetmeyer comes to the crease. Oh! Gets off the mark. Just a tickle down the leg side, and he will open with a boundary. Good end to the over, despite uh, losing the wicket of Brandon King. It's one or two for two. Easy as that. Evan Lewis, he's been out there from the start of the innings. Uh, he's in full control. And this was a wayward delivery, just helped along its way for a boundary. Searching for that big shot. This one goes high in there. Will it be taken? Yes. No mistake by Ireland. Wicket number three. And that's what you get with taking early risks to play the big shot in your innings. Hetmeyer goes. Spoke about his uh, clear mind and his ability to make decisions in quick time when he bats. This was over pitch, and without thinking, he gets it over the line for a six. Shuri Hetimaya played the ball straight down the ground, almost hitting this one on top of the roof. He just played through, just played through the line of this ball. He has a beautiful uh, bat swing. He didn't come to play. He really came out with the aggression. He's not letting the spinner settle down in his spell. The last two balls produced 10 runs. Last ball. 
of the over. Well, this is good from Puran. He is such a good player when it's over pitch, when it's short, and showing exactly that. End of the over, 128 for three. Yeah. And he's gone. Nicholas Puran. Aggression didn't pay off this time. Finding the guy at backward point. The platters to deceive on this occasion goes for 17. A short delivery here uh, from McBride and Puran slashing that one towards point and disappointment for him. Elation uh, for McBride. Another wicket falls for the West Indies. Simi Singh, two for 25. Nice shot down the ground, close enough to it to get it away for four to Lewis and. Might want to check to see if it's four or six. I think I saw four. Yeah, I think I saw four too. I just want to confirm that. But it's an area of strength for Evan Lewis, uh, that long off area. Uh, the mid off was in, which presented the opportunity for him. So it was uh, minimal risk involved to get that boundary from Evan Lewis. And he would understand how important it is for him to be there at the very end given what has happened in the recent past and confirmation there from umpire wilson that it was in fact a four it's a very good eyesight still oh, Ian Bishop. and the glasses help oh. hey. nice feeling Boy. lewis berates himself and not hitting that into the gap a good sign that he has high standards Gets it into the gap this time. So a dress rehearsal of the previous shot. This time cover can do nothing about it. And they're enjoying it in the stands as well. It's a shot that has borne good fruit for Lewis in this knock and, and in the past few games. That sweep shot played with good effect. They're just drifting down the leg side, Simi Singh, from around the wicket. So the angle takes it even further down there. And Evan Lewis just needed to get good enough contact to beat the fielder. The West Indies have done a lot of really good things again today with the ball. I, I thought a lot of what they did was good. Just one or two areas they'll want to beef up on as they go forward. The gentleman over Hetmeyer's left shoulder. O'Shane Thomas in and around the camp, not in the squad. And, and it's good to see because I think for me, his extra pace as he grows, as West Indies look to move up the rankings in this form of the game, his talent and pace and development are critical for me. The cut and thrust that he can provide, whether it's with a new ball in the middle of the innings or, or even at the end, when he gets it right, that is, is instrumental. So good to see him around. He played in that President's 11 game, of course. Lovely shot. And four. Weston is going to make this as hard for Lewis to get this 100 as possible. Glorious. Four to win. Uh, just looking at Evan Lewis, he's not really celebrating that boundary too much. It means it's just four less for him to get to his 100. But look at this shot. Exquisite bit of timing from Ruston Chase. And he knows from the moment it left the bat, no need to make a move. An excellent shot there from Ruston Chase. Good bounce from Boyd Rankin. 
his first wicket of the night, but that's the type of energy and difficulty he can create with his height. An excellent delivery to Ruston. She is very much surprised with the bounce of that one. Tried to get out of the way and unable to do so, and gloving it through to wicket keeper. Man posted a deep forward square. Gets it through. And they get two. So Lewis moves on to 95. West Indies need one to win. The crowd applauding because they want the chance to see a six and Lewis get a hundred. He smiles as well. A little discussion between the captain and Evan Lewis, Captain Karen Pollard and Evan Lewis. I just wonder what exactly is being said. Finish the game off. Or go for the 100. Did he say finish the game off or did he say go for the 100? Let's see. I heard Pollard saying stand still and hold your ground. I'm not sure how to interpret that. Finishes the game one short of what would have been such a well deserved hundred. But what a fantastic knock in the circumstances to see his team over the line entertaining this crowd and the West Indies win this first ODI. <laughs> Much to the anguish of his teammates by five wickets. An excellent start to the Colonial Medical Insurance Series for the host. For Ireland, they'll, they'll think, well, look, we, we, we could have played better with the bat. We'll certainly look to do that. Learning experiences for Peran and Hetmeyer, but the West Indies have done what they needed to do. Let's not forget Alzari Joseph and his four-wicket burst. Excellent from the young man in shot there. A cold start for this tour of the Caribbean for Ireland. But they look to, to get better and have a resurgence in this series. Well played, Evan Lewis. Starting off the decade very well. 100 or not. Team one, which is the important thing. <laughs> This is uh, their batting, Shea Hope, the 13, Evan Lewis, as you mentioned, 99 not out. Brandon King getting a start and not carrying on. But Shemron Hetmeyer and Nicholas Poor and the man in their dismissal you know, would be of concern. Ruston Chase, a good partnership between himself and Evan Lewis. And Karen Pollard uh, didn't need it to do much tonight. Uh, 184 for 5 in 33.2 overs. And so a commanding victory for the West Indies team in this first Colonial Medical Insurance won the international here at the Kensington Oval. I think we saw a difference in the quality of play when Ireland decided to bat and they were 30, I think, without loss, 55 at, or 54 at one stage for one, which became two, and fell away to Joseph's excellent, aggressive tactics. Walsh contributed with a more accurate spell in his burgeoning career and then uh, Lewis with his eighth half century one short of a hundred sealed it for the West Indies by five wickets we hope that you've enjoyed this first ODI and look forward to your company next time from Kensington Oval it's bye for now <laughs>